um, first before we get talk, uh, started. And this is sort of me wearing two hats. And I'm not doing a good job of it because uh, I'm neglecting one of the two things that I have to do. So the one hat is the sort of organizer of the Justice Dialogue, and I try to introduce people. So that's the hat I want to be wearing right now. And in that capacity, um, representing the Justice Dialogue, I just wanted to talk about the fact that we've been going since October. Okay, we had two talks in late October. We had nine talks in November. In December, we had nine talks scheduled, but two of them were canceled. And I just want to, um, uh, speak to that briefly. Um, I wanted to keep it continuous, and in part, I see it as something like the occupation, right? It's like you gotta keep doing it, you know. You know, it's like rain or snow, occupy Buffalo. Okay? <laughs> and if the Justice Dialogue audience is one or two people, I still do it. Okay, and I've done it. The first one I did was to one dude. <laughs> okay? and, but we had the live stream going, and we heard about other people who heard it, and they responded to it. Okay, So I'm very disappointed that it was canceled. But I'm He's going to do this video on tape right here. Can you sit next to me? I can figure out where to put the chair. <laughs> this is my good friend and past co uh, colleague, uh, Tim. Hi, Tim. Um, to go should I be to be teaching? Tim. <laughs> and so we shared an office in um, at, at UB. Um, hmm. The um, philosophy department when it was back in uh, the hell was the name of that building? Baldy. Baldy. It was Baldy, right? The sixth floor of Baldy. And. Uh, and Richard May was the other occupant of that uh, office. And uh, so, okay, so back to the justice dialogue, okay? So, um, so in December, um, we had a couple of talks that were canceled. And as I understand it, the first talk was canceled because there was a very small audience. And the second talk was canceled because there was a miscommunication about the weather was happening and the timing and so forth. But, um, I just want to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, I'm not going to be leaving town again anytime soon, so that's one thing that'll make sure that. But you know, in, if the case arises and I do leave town, I want to Im implore those of you from the Occupy movement who are here to please not let that happen. Do it anyway. Okay. If the speaker's here, have the talk. If the speaker's just talking to um, one other occupier and the live stream, fine. And the way I feel about it is if the speaker's only speaking to one other occupier, fine. Damn it, if the speaker's only speaking to himself, <laughs> you know, keep it going. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. What's a protest? A protest. When I did my first protest for Occupy Buffalo, I stood there across from City Hall with signs, and I was by myself. And no one else was there, so I felt, well, I said I was going to do it, and I want to make sure it's done. And I want to, you know, start doing this thing. So I did it. Stood there by my damn self. <laughs> People looked at me funny, and you know, and uh, so that's that. Um, so uh, the two people who canceled, I'm happy to say, were able to reschedule, and so they're going to be going for the next month's schedule. And I want to run through that real quick, and then get my talk started. Okay. So next month, I'm really excited about next month because we got themes going. And whereas previous months we've had almost all, well not almost all, sorry, most of the talks were given by Kanisha's philosophy professors, okay? Seven Kanisha's philosophy professors represented through the months of November, December, and so that's, that's so awesome. Um, seven different ones, okay? I mean, it's not like, I did a lot of talks with six other dudes, yeah. you know? And, and dames, <laughs> you know, came and, 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 and spoke up. Um, so we've been addressing issues of justice, social and political, but uh, um, this month coming up, we have three talks that are going to address environmental justice. 
okay? So that's, that's a real good thing because, you know, the environment is in serious misuse. And uh, there's an exchange. Justice is about exchanging. And we get things from nature, and nature gives things to us. I said the same thing twice. Um, uh, we give things to nature. No, no, it's really the other way around. Nature gives a lot to us, and we don't give a damn thing back. <laughs> right? All we're called on to do is to keep it as good as we got it. Right? And we're not doing that. We're not keeping it as good as we got it. We're fucking it up. <laughs> All right? So we have three talks on the environment. We have Daniel Ash, Farmers and Builders Opt Out. That's on the 11th of January. We have uh, Albert Brown, The Ethics and Principles of Permaculture. And that's on the 18th. Um, and then we have Roxanne Amico, Ecological Collapse. Time is short, stakes high. Um, that's on the 28th of January, the very last uh, Justice Dialogue of the month. So some other themes that are going is um, uh, racial justice. And Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday uh, day is the 20th of January. And so we have two talks that address racial justice after that. So on uh, the 21st of January, the day after, or the King Day, uh, Jacenka, um, she's uh, from Bosnia, and she has been educated um, in issues of race, of race, and she feels so affected by her education, she experienced, you know, this uh, ethnic cleansing in Bosnia, and she wants to speak about white privilege. And so her talk is Unpacking White Privilege on Peggy McIntosh and Racial Justice. That's the 21st of Saturday, 3 p.m. in her case, because that's the time she needs it with her health care, I mean her child care and, and job. And then Wednesday the 25th, I'm going to talk on Ripping Up the Racial Contract on Charles Mills and Critical Racial Theory in um, critical race theory and <coughs> philosophy. Um, okay, and so I'm excited about that. Now, racial justice, we have two talks that explicitly talk about personal integrity. I want to mention that as well, another theme of the month. Um, I'm going to talk on the 7th, this is Saturday, uh, Plato's ideal of justice as self-mastery, all right, and his critiques of oligarchy, democracy, and tyranny, okay? And then the next week, the next Saturday, Laura Haeckel, is going to give a talk on self-responsibility for collective responsibility. Okay. Um, now, I think broadly speaking, all of our talks are about responsibility uh, because we're all talking about reforming our society. We're all talking about making the society more just for, as, as Jean-Jacques Rousseau put it, uh, for the, uh, the people as a whole. He called the general will what was in the interest of everybody as a whole. And you should legislate for that in mind, for what is beneficial to everybody. So uh, in that sense, we're all talking about personal responsibility because everyone's affected. Um, OK. Um, oh, I should the, the very next talk uh, after mine will be Kamal Fields. And he also had his talk canceled, so we're rescheduling. And he's going to go first, and he's going to do uh, justice or one word or one word prayer and uh, he's going to uh, address the past the, the, the present the future concepts of justice um, that that lyric also that title comes from a lyric in um, the song by um, Ziggy Marley justice um, okay so I'm going to talk about today on moral progress, okay, so I'm going to address the issue of moral progress, what is it, and I'm going to try and develop it in reference to the ideas of universal history and the notion of a narrative uh, of justice. Okay, so um, moral progress. Uh, morality as a concept has increasingly been distinguished from ethics, um, so there's a way to treat these words as though they mean the same thing. Right. Where you can, you know, and so in our casual use, we often make them mean the same thing. Ethics and morality is the same thing. But in a desire to be a little bit more precise, okay, we're going to distinguish between ethics and between morality. 
And ethics is a, a, a discipline that really got started in the way we think of it now in the West by Aristotle. Aristotle's work on ethics are uh, several, um, but the one in particular that most people think about and that I'm focusing on here in talking about Aristotle's ethics is the Nicomachean Ethics. And that's a treatise on virtue. And in short, um, the virtues are goods that you collect. They are um, uh, your character. They're character traits. And virtue should be the positive defining character traits of a person. Okay? You collect these virtues, these goods, because they are a means. Okay? They're a means to the end of living a good life. In order to live a good life, you have to have the goods in your character that help you achieve that end. See, so there are two kinds of ends for Aristotle: instrumental ends and um, ends in themselves that are good for themselves. Um, final ends. And so, the virtues are instrumental ends, and happiness itself is the final end. You get the virtue so you can be happy. Okay. So ethics is how you realize the good. And the good for humans is our happiness. Okay? Now, morality, more narrowly speaking, morality, and this has been emphasized in modern ethics, is how you answer question, this question, really. What is right? What's the right thing to do? So, the moral thing to do is the right thing to do. Um, so, this narrow focus on rightness is a little different than how do I realize my good? How I realize my good is a personal question. What is right is in some senses really an impersonal question. Right? Now, um, so for Aristotle, you know, the virtues sort of went together and our, our basic assumption is that someone who really was virtuous and was happy among his character traits is being moral, is tending to do the right thing. But it's important not to confuse, and, and, and Nietzsche uh, sort of helps remind us of this, because Nietzsche talked about Aristotle as someone who articulated a master morality, a morality of the masters, the victors. Um, and morality increasingly, in the Christian countries at least, uh, is self-sacrificing. It's very, it's very important, that's really a cru crucial point uh, to this whole talk. Um, <coughs> morality then is self-sacrificing, and I'll, I'm going to say some things about the, the dominant moral theories today. And I want to point out how they're self-sacrificing. So for Aristotle, you know, the virtues were about how you succeed, how you'd be happy. And one of those things that contributes to happiness is you being a just person, a moral person. Being a just person, you tend to treat people fairly, and you, and, and you do the right thing, okay? But don't confuse doing the right thing in some cases with being a happy and good person. Someone who does the right thing can be a sucker and very unsuccessful, like Socrates. Someone who's extremely moral, right, would not flourish in the sense of succeed materially. And, and there's something to that. The more moral they are, the, 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 the less their chances are they're going to really succeed materially. Right? So, um, so uh, in the moderns really start to point out that this older view of moral theory, of ethics, is self-serving to the, um, the nobles. I find it ironic that um, um, the word noble means a class, and it also means a character trait. There's, you know, there's accuracy there, there's great inaccuracy there, right? Because you're well born does not really mean that you're noble spirit, does it? No, it doesn't. So, um, so critiques emerge in the modern period of the old Aristotelian, Aristotelian ethics. And they wanted more and more to answer the question, well, what is morally right? Not just what's um, practical and, and um, advantageous, excuse me, advantageous for an individual who wants to succeed, right? 
but what's morally right? And so these modern theories, right, um, utilitarianism. Well, I should first mention David uh, David Hume, who was very important as a critic, a, crit a critic, <laughs> a critic of Aristotle, and his critiques have borne real fruit in uh, in philosophy and, and so forth. So David Hume will have a mention of him, but we really want to focus on Immanuel Kant and his his ethics and his approach, and um, uh, John Stuart Mill and utilitarianism. Um, so the dominant theories of the modern age have been Kantian morality and utilitarianism. And uh, morality for, for, for the Kantian approach is respect for and obedience to law. And Kant articulated a sort of a, a universal moral law. He called it the categorical imperative. Or rather, the categorical imperative was the thing you could think to yourself in order to get clear about whether or not you were satisfying what he called the supreme moral principle. This is actually what he wrote in Groundings and in the Christian uh, Writing my 